So hi everyone. Today we would be looking at the concept of replication and sharding. How they both of uh, them are very important in system design and how both of them work. So let's take a example in real world of replication and sharding. So let's start with sharding. Let's take an example of a library. Suppose you have a library here. Now let's consider a scenario. Let's uh, imagine that this is a very popular library in a town. This is a very popular library in a town. Now this library has a single copy of a very famous book. Let that book name be X. This is the name of the book. Now, every day, numerous people come to the library to read the, to read this particular book. But since there is one copy, most of them have to wait. So to solve this problem, the library decided to make multiple copy of this book. Let's say you have one copy here, one copy here, and you have one copy here. Let's say it has made n number of copies. Now, more readers can read the same book simultaneously without waiting. So what happened here? We actually replicated that book. Similarly, similarly, I will just keep do, do things back and explain that through in the terms of database now. Similarly, suppose you have a database, just like the libraries, you made multiple copies of the book. In the database, the replications means creating multiple copies of the same data. So suppose this is your main database. This is your main database. And this is your replica database. So like you keep transferring your data, transfer your data from this. And then if some, if sometime this goes down, then you store all the data here and then you replicate it back. Something like that. Now why replication is important. So this actually increases the scalability. This increases the availability and you actually have a backup. Like having multiple copies ensures data safety. In availability, if one copy, suppose, suppose if one of this main server goes down, then other server can still have the data. Similarly, coming to scalability, more users can read data simultaneously from different copies. Suppose all the users from India are reading from here. Now all the users from, let's say, a neighboring country, China are reading from here. And suppose you had one more copy, you had one more copy, all the readers from Vietnam or Singapore are reading here, something like that. So this is how replication works. Now, the act of duplicating the data from one database to other, this is sometimes used to, you know, increase the redundancy of the system and tolerate failures, for instance, as you have seen through an example. Other times, you, you can use replication to move data closer to your clients. So that was the replication in a nutshell. Now. No, you need to make sure you need to make sure you are th that you are doing the sync and async very smartly. You're doing the sync and async very smartly. You have the concept of async and sync. Now, for understanding async and sync, let's let first talk about their definitions, how they are different. So let's talk about sync first. Sync. Now, sync stands for synchronous replication. Suppose a client issues a write operation to this master database. Okay, to the master database. Now the primary database sends this operation to the replica. They send this to replica. Now replica database acknowledges the recipient successfully app successful application of the uh, that all the things have been updated as you said here. Now once all the replicas acknowledge the primary database commits the transaction and acknowledges back to the client. So this is how sync operation works. Now when it comes to async, suppose a client issues again a uh, uh, and a op write operation to the primary database. Now the primary database commits the write and immediately acknowledges it back to the client without doing that in replica. It will give back to the client. Okay, I have done it. And after that, it will do that to the replica. So this is how async works. L like in sync, you were first taking the operation, uh, doing that also in replica, then sync back to client. Okay, I have done it. But in async, you are doing ex exactly the opposite. So this is how sync and async works. Now we are done with replicas, replication. We can talk about sharding. About sharding. What is sharding? Like if I tell you in a nutshell, sometimes you know this is also called this is also co also called data partitioning. It's called data partitioning. Now sharding. Sharding is the act of splitting a database, you know, into two or more pieces called shards 
and is typically you know this is done to increase the throughput of a database like you know it can be based on a lot of things but we will talk about two or three as an example so suppose suppose this was your whole main database then if you do sharding you will have one shard two shard three four five let's say and these are called shards so you have slated it cool so this is how sharding is done now when it comes to exactly why sharding now imagine that only bookstore scenario that has grown in popularity it has vast collection but all the books are stored in a single massive shelf as the number of books increase it becomes harder to manage and locate specific books also the shelf itself has a limit to how many books it can hold so for the solution the bookstore decide bookstore decides to split its collection across multiple shelves same thing is happening in database so you are you know dividing all the things in a uh, synchronous manner to other databases so like the bookstore distributed its book across multiple shelves sharding in database you know uh, distributing all the things into multiple portions of uh, uh, of the entire data into multiple portions of data set so as data grows it can be distributed ac across multiple servers this is the main concept of sharding now on what what basis you are going to shard it you got randomly do it so the first thing can be uh, let's say sharding based on the client region let's say you, this whole is in usa but your clients are in china and uk something like that now you can shard your database according to region this one is for china this one is for uk something like that then you have sharding based on the type of data being stored let's say this whole database was storing uh, facebook data now it can shard on the basis like all the images would go here all the text will go here all the videos will go here something like that now sharding can be also done on the basis on the based on the hash of a column let's say you have columns that consist of different kinds of information you can shard that on the basis of that also so yeah that was sharding in the nutshell so now you understand why replication and sharding is important and we are going to apply that in a lot of example when it comes to uh, uh, actual doing system design examples so yes so that was it from my side in the next video we are going to talk about leader election consistency algorithm and a lot of other things so thank you and have a nice day